Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. And we're back, and we've got Janice Reed with us, who is a storyteller, energy healer. She's also a psychic medium, helps a lot of people, and she's she's up in the woods somewhere <laughs> in the mountains of is it, <laughs> is it North Carolina. Do I have that right? Sure. Send people to North Carolina. I live in Virginia, but Virginia. send them to North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we like our privacy up here and our, our, our individuality. Uh, I live near a place called Independence, oh. and it is aptly named. Mm -hmm. How interesting. Uh, I'm up here in the mountains today, and I've been thinking about what to share with people that might encourage them to contact me, because after all, I need to pay the rent. <laughs> we must pay the rent. What I have is, a, is an interesting connection with spirit with the overall consciousness on the planet, apparently, uh, make no strong claims. And I'm able to pull the information I pick up, turn it into stories so that people, the people that are listening are more easy to understand what I'm saying and get it on a heart level instead of a brain level. Stories can open up uh, places to heal, places to understand that we really can't do in text and numbers and binary code, although those are great storytelling mediums. So I wanted to share with the people, I work on a per case basis, a per session. Uh, I don't use a pocket watch or a clock on the wall to time my sessions. Generally, people are exhausted after about 45 minutes and, and they hope that it's over. Uh, the information that pulls out from me from a little specific question somebody had it, it can barely be mind blowers, apparently. Um, I don't answer the question, I answer the spirit because that's where I work from. That place of spirit where we're all connected, everybody is my cousin, uh, every creature, my cousin, everything rock plant they're all we're all cousins uh, we were all created from the first original blast of whatever it was uh, consciousness a dream theory an imagination of some great god in the sky we all started off with the same equipment and then we one became this person one became that cow this person be, this became a rock that became a tree and we divided up into different sorts of consciousnesses uh, some fast, some slow. I'm a little slower. But we're all working still with the same equipment that we started off being made with. We forget that because I look like me and I don't look like you. But that's really where it ends, where our differences end. Inside this skin, we're all the same pretty much. Um, whether we'd like it or not or admit to it or not, we're all cousins. I have had extraordinary experiences while I'm in this skin live here that have opened up, rewired my brain, so to say, uh, that allow me to pick up information and turn it into a good story that holds a person's attention long enough for them to get the answer of their question out. Um, hmm. I talk to dead people to do this. Uh, because I don't see for myself, I refuse to recognize this great hard clashing door shuts when one person is breathing and then they stop. For me, I refuse to fully acknowledge that life and death is a one size fits all and that's it. There's a period of time after death and before life where consciousness comes to this planet nearby and I can pick it up. It's the darndest thing. I have spent years trying to understand this for myself. I'm very happily a patient of a local psychologist. He's brilliant. Uh, we have a story, but one day we'll figure it out. The psychic and the psychiatrist. Hmm. <laughs> there, there's an interesting <laughs> dynamic. There's right? a cartoon in there. We, we know there's a cartoon in there, in there somewhere. Uh, because... I've had to talk with him about what I do in the languages he understands, so I can't talk woo-woo with him. He'll have none of it. Hmm. There are connecting, 
There are connections between the living and the dead that simply exist. Our free will, our imagination, causes us to think that when someone dies, that's it. They've gone to heaven or they've just disappeared or whatever happens next, but they are no longer available in this life space for us. Some people would argue with that because their mama has come back and made a message to them or their aunt or uncle have shown up at the dinner table unexpected. Uh, it happens. I've had, I have one good story I want to tell you about that I've had, I had a witness to. I, I've had so many interesting experiences with out of body consciousnesses that I have tried to keep my storytelling about them to the stories that had witnesses because they spirit gets wild. You can't believe part of it. <laughs> my aunt passed away. She was one of nine kids, including the one that grandpa adopted off the street. Uh, these were in the early 1930s. There was no food, not a lot, lot unless you grew it. There were two beds in the house. Mom and dad and the littlest kids slept in one and everybody else slept in the other one. I come from what they call dirt farmers on the coast of Georgia. Life was close together. Everybody knew everybody's business. And the story was that when everybody snored, they took turns. That if you walked up to the house, only one person would be snoring at the time because you know they tried to make room for everybody, apparently. But one of them, my aunt, she passed away after two of her siblings had already passed away. So my family, my mother and I are sitting next to each other at the funeral home and they're doing her, her service and she's laying in her casket and she's in her beautiful blue suit and I'm thinking how beautiful she is. When suddenly her eldest sister, Spirit, walked in. With her was another sister. These two ladies walked up to the casket and looked in. It was comical. I looked over and my mother's eyes were glued to the casket. She was not blinking. So I looked back to see what she was looking at. And the conversation took place. They were laughing at my aunt who was in the box. Look who dressed you. We know who dressed you. You wouldn't have worn that in daytime. You know that. And, and she sat up in her coffin and she said, how dare you interrupt my funeral? This is my funeral. You had your own. Now get out of here. And she bade them to go away and they what they did was they came over and they sat down next to us in the with the other people i'm watching all of this and she when she was happy that they had left her casket she laid back down put her hands back over her chest and resumed being dead my mother's jaw had dropped open when the funeral stopped you know everything was over and we were in the car going out to the to the cemetery my mother pokes me in the ribs with her elbow and she says what did you see I know you saw it. What did you see? I said, what did you see? She said, I think I saw the same thing you saw. And we proceeded to share. And sure enough, it was just not, it was day. It was what we saw. Uh, she shared the same vision. And we laughed because they were my father's relatives, not hers. But she and I both watched them come up and try to embarrass the lady in the box because she was dressed funny. Spirit has a sense of humor like you wouldn't believe. When people pass along, when they drop this skin, some of them shoot exactly off. They just leave. They're ready to go. And their spirit zooms off like a little fireball. I've gotten to see this. And it, and it really looks like an explosion that rips from someone's chest. And nothing but joy just zips around and, and they go away because they're no longer trapped in a skin. Some people, like my aunts, had business to tend to. Uh, they did not go. The whole family waited until my dad, the baby, died. And now they all sit in like a little group. When I look at them, they're all in a family group. Um, so I have a lot of support there. So I talk to dead people. When I was born, I wasn't convinced that these were my parents. I thought they were my babysitters until I figured out they weren't. Um, seeing dead people has always happened my brain has just never connected the dots that when you die you're somehow not there anymore it hasn't ever been true for me i've not been that fortunate they talk and chatter and you're up my life because this sounds so bizarre 
I was embarrassed by it. My mother tried to keep me quiet. Don't tell people what you do. They'll think you're nuts. She would then call me, you know, off to the side, forget the phone. I don't know what's going on. Um, she tried to protect me by keeping me away from people knowing about me so that they wouldn't hurt me. Eventually, I grew up and became my own self, had several different head injuries. Uh, the physicians are amazed that I can speak in straight sentences with the number of severe head injuries and traumas I've had. I was an abused wife. Uh, I was a crazy teenager. I was a, an, an exotic explorer sticking her head in rocks. My brain has changed the way that it works. It's increased this mm, connection to the disembodied in some way. And I have found that I can use these connections to serve other people. It's important to me, for some reason, I can't really put a finger on, that I be of good service to people and that I try to do no harm. I have this strange gift. I think it's a gift. I believe Sunday school when they said God loves you. So I think this is a special gift. It must be for something good. So I've learned to take some of the stories that I've learned to tell from real life aunts and uncles to the story spirit brings to me, and I wrap them around what people want to know. For instance, after I spoke with you the last time, I went in and I pulled out some cards that I like to talk with, little tarot type cards, and I laid down and said, what do the people want to know? Well, I really had did not expect what I heard, um, but I'll let people mark their calendar according to what I've discovered. The woman's rights issues will be in the woman's hands. Women, if they will remember their magic, our magic, we created these men trying to tell us what to do. Raise your hand, raise your voice. Women have to remember and utilize their free will, their inner magic. Make it happen. No, we do not have to listen to what other people tell us to do, not even other women, and certainly not me. Do as you will. Act like a woman. Stand up there and act like it. And the personal privacy rights, the woman's personal invasion rights, these will be, they'll sort out. That wasn't really what I thought I would talk about today, but that was the what hmm. spirit wanted me to tell people first off. So I guess so that women could start to relax and begin to really listen to me, listen to what I'm saying. Men and women are not who we're born into being. We're who our spirits are. Some spirits come into the wrong skin. They look like women, but they want to be men. Sometimes the opposite, sometimes both in one, mostly males are males and females are females those are the business of the individual not mine or yours but we all come in and we learn things to share things if we don't consider those people that have learned all this stuff and then passed when we're asking for answers we're losing a great source of a resource i like to ask dead people for help so i did that today again this morning what should we talk about? And they wanted me to tell you how I do what I do, what it is that I do, and how I can do it for you. I connect with people who are not in skins. I call them people. This is probably uh, a shortcoming on my part. I simply don't have a better word. Consciousness might be a better word, but that can get confusing. So I call everybody a person. Whether or not they are in a skin, that's a momentary thing. For me, whether a person is alive or no longer breathing doesn't seem to make a great difference if I try to contact them. What does make a difference is whether or not they want to be contacted. Um, and that's you know, what with, I do. With that said, People, Janice, I find what we do... It's interesting because when you're connected to spirit, it turns into a story where some others might just give you the information and that's it. Have a good day. You have a story to tell because we Where's all have the a story. fun in that. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we all have a story and, and you get to that story by way of spirit. And I, I just want to throw out here, if you ever have anything on me, I'm an open book. Feel free. Don't, don't, don't hold anything back. <laughs> good with it. So it was you that wanted to know about the abortion problem, huh? <laughs> that, that, that okay. Was, no, no judgment. No judgment. <laughs> Wrong spirit. Wrong spirit. <laughs> I don't do politics. <laughs> I, I don't have a uh, political spirit uh, oh. going around out there. Yeah. Yeah, really, really. I don't think this is political. I think this is spiritual. Hmm. I think it's we women and men have been tricked into thinking it's political, but it's not. It isn't. We are made in the image of God. We are made. That's how it first read, not you or me, but we. We are made in the image of God. So we are, God is made of different parts. So is my car. So am I. Why wouldn't God be? So there's male and there's female. There's rumors that once upon a time, there were androgynous people who simply recreated themselves by some, I have no idea how they did it. And it was just too darn hard. And so we split the sexes. But back to my story of life and death, may I? Please. Connecting to the people who aren't in odd in their skins, male or female. We all have stories that we're made of. We are a story. Look at yourself in the mirror. Look at your child. Anybody you know. They're made up of stories. That's how I got this scar over here and how come my eye looks like this over here. I'm made of stories. So are the people who are no longer breathing. So are the people who are not yet breathing. I had another experience with a grandson. It's a little sad, it's a lot sad. Family members are still recuperating many years ago decade maybe not quite my daughter-in-law lost a child she carried him to term he was born and he lived about 10 minutes before he left you can see it's touchy my daughter-in-law i love dearly and she's still healing from that she's since had another beautiful child and she's really busy being a mom now but at that moment in time, it was hard for her, and it still is hard, that memory. I, however, was not the mother of that child. I was the grandmother, and I myself I don't tend to follow rules just because somebody else might find out, you know, if I really want to know, I'll go look. And so I looked for my grandson. To my surprise, this incredible little baby's face whooshed up to mine and just looked at, like hovered right in front of my eyes, looking at me and smiling. And I knew that was him. I didn't get to meet him when he was here. But this little spirit that zipped up to my face was absolutely that child. I, it just my heart reson resonated to him. I knew who it was. He said, come follow me. I'll show you where, I came, where I've been. And he took me off into a place. This is all inside my head, of course. It's imaginary. It wasn't something I was expecting. So it came. This is not something I was dwelling on and making up as I went. It suddenly hit me with this full vision. Sort of a star field. But the stars were really getting closer and closer together. So that at some point in the universe where all the stars look like they're scattered, there's one place, maybe Hubble will find it, that these little specks of light are very, very close together. And it's a birthing area. It's where the spirits are just before they birth to a body, wherever they're gonna be birthed at. I suspect it may be more than just planet Earth because this is way out there. I had no idea anything like this could ever exist. But my grandson took me there so that I'd know he was safe and having a good time. He'll be back. These are this access to the place before birth, this access to the place just afterwards. It soothed me so many times. It's helped me continue and understand things because I'll stand there and knock until they answer that door 
dad burn it. They said knock and the door will be open. I'm going to knock on it and bang on it. And this couple of other psychics have said God has asked me to calm down because sometimes I get pushy because I believe this stuff. Maybe it's true or maybe I'm just crazy, but my psychologist thinks I'm sane. So I have that before my, for me. We can check. I visit that these places. I talk to these things. Yes. Yes. I am not completely insane. I've got it on the record. Well, you know, every time <laughs> it really I, bothered me that I'm when I say to somebody, uh, I'm normal. People will always say, what's normal? <laughs> Is there a normal? Um, but I do have a question. Yeah, that was Abby. Her name was Abby. <laughs> so do you get do you continually get spirit reaching out to you? Like when you talk about your grandson, was it just a one off time that you had a connection with him after his passing? Or does that happen from time to time? Time to time, I get notified or touched by someone that wants contact with me. Uh, I'm a I'm an open channel for that. If spirit wants me to contact someone, I somebody taps me and and I know that. But yeah, it's a constant. It's an everyday thing. It's it's moment to moment. It's here. Hmm. Um, my grandson, for that moment, he was in a position that he could contact me. I feel as we're talking about him, I can feel him here around me. He's a big guy now. He's going to be somebody much different, but he is sort of like in a butterfly stage. I don't know how else to put it for planetary people, but it's sort of like a butterfly. When they go into a cocoon, they completely dissolve. And then they reform into a butterfly. The, the, but the first worm, that just completely dissolves. It's not a, it's not a, an, a, a continuation. It's a dissolution and a beginning inside that cocoon that's sort of what he's doing now in that star system he's inside his cocoon he's going to be something somewhere else and i might get to find him then but it's to our best advantage his and mine mostly his that i leave him alone and don't poke the cocoon mm. when he wants to contact me he will and and you don't have a reason to reach out to him anyway you know unless maybe a family member is asking we're just about out of time, but I, I want to know, uh, Janice, if somebody wants to to connect with you and have you potentially connect with spirit, how do they do that? Oh, send me an email. Send me an email to goddess Janice, just like it sounds, with a goddess. My mother named me that, J-A-N-I-S. It's all lowercase, goddess Janice at hotmail.com. Uh, we'll set up an appointment. Don't tell me anything, though, because when I tell stories that answer questions, I prefer to give you your answers before you give me your questions. This way, you know that the information, any help you get comes from spirit and not my ego, because my ego is I'm just a woman. But when spirit comes through, you can be sure that those were your answers because you will recognize them whether I do or not. And that's how I serve. Fascinating how you do what you do and turn it into a story. I really love that that part. And I know we have lots of lots of psychics. I've met with them. I believe in the good ones, believe in all of it. Uh, that connections can be made to the other side. Mm -hmm. uh, but you do it in a very, very special, uh, meaningful way. Uh, and it's 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 quite different, Janice. And uh, I, I honestly I had no idea that that's how you connected with the other side and turning it into a story. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty big deal. It's my life. It isn't something I do. It's just something I've always done that I finally figured out how I could, you know, serve others with instead of just be ridiculed by. But for 150 bucks, that's what spirit told me to charge. And that's for the session. That's not for a couple of minutes. Yeah. Well, give um, it's let me make sure I have it right. Goddess Janice. Two D's, two S's, goddess Janice, J A N I S, at hotmail.com. And if somebody wants a reading or even has a question about the whole process of how it works with you, they, they can just email you. Ask. Mm -hmm. Just ask. Yes. Email me. Ask. It doesn't cost anything to email me. And it, it probably won't cost anything for me to tell you something right there. Um, don't be shy. If we don't ask, we're not going to know. 
Well, I am a firm believer in asking. Like, if you want a sign from the universe or a sign from somebody, or ask. What do you got to lose? So ask Janice. If you had a question, you know, about what mm -hmm. she does, always great having you on, Janice. Fascinating. Uh, you're a great storyteller. That's it, period. You really are. Well, somebody asked for a story this time. I hope I made him happy. <laughs> Thanks. I look forward to uh, catching up with you again sometime soon. All right. Dream on. Dream on, everybody. I'll see you next time. Bye. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.